are medical jargon buster. Um, and we set out to solve the problem of medical jargon in clinic letters that are received by patients. Um, so although patients are usually copied into these letters, uh, the clinical letters that summarize the consultation that a patient has are usually really designed to be read from healthcare professional to healthcare professional. Um, so as a result, they often contain kind of specialist vocabulary, uh, which is concise but not necessarily understandable for someone who is not medical. Um, so patients rarely receive letters that are tailored to their own understanding. Um, from the clinicians that they're seeing uh, in clinic. Um, and this lack of understanding can sort of directly really contribute to patient outcomes. Um, so uh, the jargon in letters contributes to um, kind of blocking understanding, which leads to an increased risk of misinterpretation uh, and miscommunication. Um, it also leads really to lower engagement. So um, people feel they have a lot of lo lower health agency uh, in terms of deciding what they're doing about their care and limiting shared decision making. Uh, and there's also a risk that we're widening inequalities here, so people with lower health literacy are going to struggle to engage further in their health um, and then risk of widening kind of any existing health disparities uh, that there are. Um, so we thought there must be a better way really than people talking to a friend of a friend of a friend to clinical uh, or ultimately turning to Google to type in the terms that they didn't understand. Yeah, so Medical Jargon Buster has built a really accessible, easy tool that essentially translates clinical, jargon-filled letters into friendly, easygoing, patient-friendly uh, information and letters. And this can be accessed anywhere from our web portal, it's all based on the cloud, and essentially the letter takes, uh, the, the tool takes all those uh, jargon-filled uh, paragraphs and blood tests, etc., and it presents it in nice, uh, simple, easy-to-understand information, and then you can follow up with either a glossary of terms or different questions based on that so how do we do this? Um, so we started off thinking that we will try to tackle this problem using a no-code solution environments. Uh, so we, we have a website put up now. We, we've used software a web development tool for this, which is again, no-code solution. And then we use Langbot, which is a, a bot generation software. Again, a no-code environment. And we have integrated chat GPT Oh, sorry, GPT-4, don't be afraid. We, have, we put in all the required regulations so that it does not give you anything crazy in there. And we've also linked it to Google Cloud Vision a, uh, API, which basically does the OCR, so that you can just click a picture of, your, of, of the letter that you've received, and it converts everything into text, and everything is taken care of. Uh, again, we use OpenAI. We use the GPT-4 at this point, and we have backups of GPT-3.5 and GPT-3 in case something goes wrong. And we use Make to connect all of these different layers up. Yeah. So uh, you can see uh, the text is a bit small, but the, the, this is a, an original document that a patient uh, might have received uh, addressed from the specialist to the, uh, to the GP couple of pieces of text that we'll pull down the, 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 so it, originally in the letter you've got doctor speak jargon uh, and you can see on the right side uh, the resulting text which hopefully should be clearer and easier to understand. Uh, and now, oh, and uh, following on from the, uh, the, the translation of the text uh, the, the, then the, the user has the opportunity to ask questions to further simplify uh, the text that's been produced and also to generate a glossary of the terms that were in the original letter that would be more understandable to non-clinical uh, people. Uh, so if you've got time, we can show you if this as a, as a live demo. So um, we have a letter that we prepared earlier here. Um, so you see it's the one we saw previously. So uh, it's a psychiatric clinic. They've had a scan. They've um, been started on some uh, lithium uh, and they need daily, uh, weekly blood tests. We upload our file and we can support multiple pages as well. Um, you send that in to us. Uh, we advise people uh, when they uh, use the service to kind of blank out any identifiable information so we don't really store any of that. Uh, and then we will process all of that and then return to you uh, this summary. It takes a couple of seconds at this point. And 
So one of the problems with using a lot of no no code solutions is that the the waiting times, the lag times, also slowly add up. Uh, but yeah, we can always switch to the the actual one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. start taking the questions while this is working in the background. Yeah. And it's very customizable, right? So we, we played around a lot with different prompts that we can use of how, just how simple to get and how complex to get. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Um, so yeah, we can do more things here. But as you can see, here's your full uh, MDV, Medical Journalism Buster. Um, fully simplified. Um, and yeah, we can click on these things well to be uh, decent questions. So simplify gives you an even shorter paragraph summary. Okay, I'm going to, while well, that's running, I'm going to start taking the questions. So, yeah, Rob. I miss you more praise, to be honest. Great product that's actually working today. So, well done. I know it goes great. You know. Have you thought perhaps even bigger problem than me understanding my letter is the million people in the UK whose language isn't English? This could also be take photo and it's going to any one of those languages. Yeah. I think so, exactly. Uh, we were talking about this. Do you, do you want to take yeah. it? Yeah. So uh, the OpenAI model, they can easily do the translation. So whatever you, it's just giving a different set of instructions. The basic technology remains the same. Okay. So that's something that can be really done easily. And if you don't trust OpenAI that much, we can also connect it to Google Translate, which can be a small upgrade that we, we just added to the API. Liam? Uh, observation this depends on the recipient of the letter. So actually, it's not human. There's no desktop on your phone. You take a photo. So it's all very like consumer-driven. But yeah, I agree. I mean, the the dream would be when you write your clinic letter, you also click a button and it generates a, a patient. A different version to be sent to the patient. Yeah, that's also quite. So you can't guarantee the quality of what comes out of it. Either. Yeah, they yeah, can. So they could vet it. But you can't guarantee it. It's better to have that done on the health yeah. professional yeah. side yeah. than the citizen side. Yeah. Go on, Mike. So, yeah. You said black out fits the letter, but I would I don't know how other people in the audience or you guys feel, but I feel incredibly uncomfortable putting a clinic letter about me through uh, how many services were there, like six or seven services get to read my clinic letter. Um, and like we know they do data linkage, they know my account, IP address, various bits and bobs. Like you just uh, <laughs> The privacy implications for this, personally, I, I'm horrified um, and uh, we would strongly recommend against people using a service like this, but I mean, each, each to their own. Uh, sorry, that wasn't really a question. That was <laughs> when, you're cool, when you're an organiser of NHS Hack Dive, you do sometimes get to give your opinion. <laughs> um, any other questions? Have you talked about how should translate how creative it should get. In theory, it should really just be directly translating messages to others. But. So uh, originally, we, we, we had the function where, where the uh, original OCR text was displayed before the simplified version. We removed that because it involves a lot of scrolling in, in, the, in the setup that we've got at the moment. But uh, one way around would be, would, would be for the patient to have already read the contents of the letter before they had scanned it with their smartphone, or for them to originally to, to read the OCR text, which would include all the jargon. So it's not a perfect solution, but we're working from a point of view down here where they may not understand anything in the letter at all. Uh, that the risk is that 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 that, that their, their their comprehension would be very limited, and so we're just trying to improve that understanding. Uh, one other uh, approach is, uh, in addition to this, uh, we haven't done this today, we had only two days, but uh, taking an uh, other model, so if one model is translating it, other models can check and verify that the, uh, more whatever the first model did is correct. So in terms of scoring, we can have separate models scoring the first model. So these kinds of techniques can be used 
to improve that accuracy of the output. Fair enough. Guy? <laughs> yeah, part, of, part of it is what's the best uh, sort of mode of transfer of information versus the ease of it and the cost of it. Um, so, you know, how are you going to deliver those other forms of media? I mean, you're posting it, you're emailing it, it's on an app, you can use the app, it's a whole, you know, infrastructure is behind it. So, it's a totally valid point. Just we're working from where we are now. And patient records are a selection of, or a combination of documents, aren't they? Uh, and so, you know, we're, we're, we're building on, on the existing mm -hmm. system. In, in a year or two, probably we don't even have to make that decision. You can present all three, text, video, audio, whatever the patient, the patient can choose whatever they want. So. Mm -hmm. just, just to go back to your point about the privacy, I know at this point it, you know you, we're, we're talking about something that, that is that is uploaded to, as you say, lots of different services. But in the future, I imagine that the NHS may have its own in-house ward garden um, version. And in that sort of scenario, something like this, you know, perhaps people could be more reassured that the data wouldn't be going anywhere other than um, the NHS. But this gives us an idea of what that future could look like. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for doing that. Yeah.